Hello, I am Wallace, the Polish Toy Guy, and in today's video I'm going to show you Fans Hobby Master Builder MB03 Fei Long Transforming Toy. Just like it was the case with MB02 Megatooth, Fei Long is inspired by Transformers Generation 1 subgroup Monster Bots and shows us what could happen if someone decided to give Generation 1 Double Cross Masterpiece style treatment. This copy of Fei Long was provided to me by Fans Hobby themselves for the purpose of this review. And as they call it, it is a very final test shot, which means that this is nearly the retail version, minus some minor tolerance tweaks for some of the parts. But other than that, what you see right here is what you will get when you decide to get Fei Long for yourselves. Before we take a look at Fei Long himself, let's take a look at his vessel, the cardboard box he's transported in from the shop to our home. And it's a nice, simple yet stylish box that does a good job of portraying the toy, showcasing all of its features and overall being a nice display piece all on its own. It's different from the style that Arch Enemies box had, but from what I can tell it's the same style as Megatooth's. And I'm not sure if I liked one over the other, but yes, it's a nice looking box, which I do appreciate for what it is. Can't say the same for the inner resting tray though, because it seems downright impractical. With Arch Enemy we had this blister tray that covered the whole toy, then we had a slightly wider cover tray that was just the top and the outer walls, but here we have two halves that do not overlap each other, instead they work like Pac-Man's mouth and here we have one half and back of Fei Long, and here we have the front of Fei Long packed in robot mode. And the only thing that connects these halves are these small protrusions that go into smaller slots on the other half and pieces of glue tape. So, as you may imagine, it's not recommended to open up this toy when it's standing vertically. You best keep it like that, because otherwise you risk spilling your Fei Long on the floor, no matter how far it is from your current location. And we also get this nice full-color printed four-page instruction manual that tells us how to use Fei Long's gimmicks and how to transform him from robot to dragon mode. It's nice, it copies the style of the box, it's simple but functional. The majority of the steps have this main black and white, color scheme with red overlaying the parts that we have to move at each step. And we also get some nice line art here and here. So overall it's nice and it's definitely a step up from my amazing test shot instruction manual for Megatooth which will remain in my memories for a long long time. And now it's time for the main dish. Fei Long himself, who, just like his source material, transforms into a twin-headed dragon. And what a dragon that is! Fei Long, so far, shapes to be my favorite toy of fans' hobbies, monster bot inspired creations, and for several reasons too. One, the sculpting on him is an excellent mix of smooth and detailed surfaces that go very well along his color scheme of grey, black, red and white. This is both faithful to the source material and quite well matched to the overall design, which I frankly do prefer over Megatooth's. As you may remember from my review of the latter, I liked him as a solid toy, but his monster bug design felt more like harmless yet very nostalgic piece of robot rather than a downright threatening killer beast. Fei Long has this matter fully covered, and the very first second you look at him, you know it would not be a good idea to stand in his way if this toy was a real-life robotic entity. He is one of these toys that combines eye-catching looks with an imposing and threatening presence, and his sculpt is further enhanced by multiple applications of red that help to liven up the body and make it more interesting and diversified to look at. And then there's the matter of size. Just like Megatooth and Arch Enemy, Fei Long is both bulky and hefty and occupies a lot of optical space with his size. 
with an average length of 37cm, height of 20 and wingspan of 30, this dragon is just huge and easily towers over smaller toys. And due to his mass, I do not recommend holding him for too long, with 680 grams of weight he can tire out the hands quite fast, especially when you try to review him. Also, this is the first toy from Fans Hobby that includes alt mode weapon storage, something that I really appreciate because I did nag about that in my reviews of Arch Enemy and Megadoof for lack of that feature. So with Fei Long, the weapons are attached to these two slots just in front of the tail, and we can occupy them with these two guns, which I really like. Well, except for the fact that they are the same mold copied twice, as you can tell by the placement of screw holes, so no symmetrical weapons that I'm used to, but other than that, I really like this pair. Because, firstly, it's a pair. Neither Megatooth, neither Arch Enemy had dual weapons, so this is a very appreciated change, and the gun itself looks quite nice with its gunmetal color of plastic, well, gunmetal grey, enough details to convey a feeling of a powerful energy-based weapon, and it's also quite big and light, so it looks nice but is easy to handle. So we plug them into Fei Long using the bottom of the handles, and they look quite nice on the back, though the angle at which they are docked means that uh, it may not be the easiest thing to pose them in a way that makes the firing look quite plausible. It all depends on how you angle the whole figure so that these are facing the enemy somewhat, perhaps the enemy that's in front of Phelong, not above him, but it's all a matter of adjusting things. And speaking of adjusting, let's take a look at Fei Long's Dragon Mode posability. Though I will say it right now, I don't think in this mode it's as dynamic as it was with Megatooth, who was slightly more humanoid in his proportions and overall posture. This guy is basically designed to stay in one main stance that you can slightly alter, and other than that, it's not really designed to give you dynamic poses in this mode. So, of course, the main thing with Fei Long are the legs, which are on ratchets, which are single axis, because while they can slightly go outward, this is mainly done for the sake of transformation, as are the knees, which are on a ball joint, and it's a ball joint that can slightly tilt to the sides, but this is mostly for the sake of robot mode. And we have also the feet with claws, very tight ratchets that are almost hard to operate with a, one, with a single hand. And we also have the heel spurs, which do move, but mostly for the transformation. If you want, you can even lift them up in dragon mode and they will not really change anything for his stability because the majority of the toy's weight is resting on the front of the feet. So what you do with that is entirely up to you. And then we have the small dragon arms, which are on ball joints with hinged elbows, and that's about it. There's nothing you can do with the claws, which are a single piece with the forearm. And I'm not sure if I'm really disappointed by that. Looking at toys like Masterpiece Grimlock, yes, you could add more possibility to these parts, but then again, what's the purpose? These can't reach out to anything. They are here mostly to complete the look of a dragon and to be more faithful to the source material. So, I think for this toy's overall performance, what we have with the arms is enough. And we have also the wings, which can go all the way up and down on these two segments. And for the heads, we can of course open up the jaws, especially the lower one, which has a double hinge, which we can open really, really wide and even tuck this under the rest of the head. And we also have a double hinge here at, behind the eyes, so we can also 
raise up the upper jaw with the eyes and the nose, but I will show you the full extent of this joint in robot mode. And we can also rotate the heads to the sides and bend them at the middle of the neck using this double joint that will clearly become the robot elbows. And we can also lower the whole neck using this joint as well as rotate it over here and technically we can also move this red piece at its base but it's more for the purpose of the robot mode so we will leave it for now. And as you can see there's a round barrel housed inside the head and I don't know if that's supposed to be a flamethrower or some kind of energy gun. I'm going to talk about this barrel more in robot mode but it can also be used in dragon mode both just with this context that we have right now and with the future released accessories fans hobby has announced that they will make flame effect parts that will fit these barrels now one thing to notice with this toy is that the arms are connected to the same segment as the wings and on the original toy these were all flush with the body at a straight angle here they are slightly diagonal and this is not a flaw, do not adjust that. This is the final limit set on by the designers. And if you look closely at the way the wings and these red bits connect, you can see that they have a sort of shared diagonal cut of the edges, which indicates that this in fact is the proper position of the wing. And if you take a look at Fei Long's dragon chest, you will see some details that kind of look like an edge of a bus saw. And that is related to a gimmick that Double Cross had. When you pressed a button on his back, a small bus saw started to move up and down in his chest, accompanied by cold sparks flying out of a hole above. And while due to Fei Long's transformation, this gimmick could not be moved onto this toy, it seems Fans Hobby decided that this was visually important enough to incorporate it into Fei Long's design as well. And while we are on the topic of this chest part, it's worth to mention that if you look at the very first prototype pictures of Fei Long, you will not be able to find this because this addition was made in the second version of this toy. It's actually Really nice that fans hobby looked at the first prototype and thought what could they still improve. And I'm not sure if this was their own initiative or fan feedback, but it's really cool that they changed the prototype before releasing it to the wide public. And these prototype modifications also include adding this middle section to the wing and adding these panels that hide robot thighs and allow us to mount the guns. So it's really great to see that fans hobby toys go through an additional evolution between the prototype and final stage. And I'm happy to say that the upcoming Gunfighter 2 based on the mold of Arch Enemy is also going through this kind of procedure. So it will be definitely different from MBO1. And now it's time for alt mode comparison. So let's start with the previous monster bot inspired toy by fans hobby, MBO2 Megatooth. And here's Fei Long next to my other double headed dragon, Robots in Disguise Megatron. And here's Fei Long next to my single headed dragon, Ultra Class Cybertron Scourge, who technically can grow two more heads depending on his mood. It's complicated. And finally, here we have Fei Long next to one more Megatron, this time Ultra Class from Beast Wars. Yes! And now it's time to start transforming Fei Long into his robot mode. And I'll be very honest, this transformation is somewhat problematic for me at times. Yes, technically speaking, it's simple and there are not all that many tricky steps, but it's kind of hard to execute given the mass of this toy and its weight especially when you try to review it. So first we will remove the weapons from Fei Long's back. Then we will straighten out the wings and lift up the smaller dragon limbs and flip all of this on this hinge below. And we are doing this to give ourselves as much space for transforming the legs as possible. And with that in mind, we can also grab the torso, extend it 
and lift up these panels so that they are no longer anchored to these grey panels. And now it's time to take care of the most annoying part of this transformation. Annoying not because it's all that hard, but because with limited space it's not the easiest to execute. So we want to separate the legs and then we want to lift up this front section of this panel and then we want to open up the rest of the panel and as we do it we want to bend out the leg so it's sticking out as much as possible while simultaneously lowering this whole outer shell so that the thigh is above it and this is tricky because as you can see, parts are very quickly starting to hit, hit each other. But let's try split and lower keywords. And also remember to keep an eye on this panel so that does not break off. We can also use the robot's thigh joint to help us a bit. So yes, uh, I think we're going to get it. Great. Of course, keep the tail out of the way. Yes, we did it. That was actually very annoying. This is my third attempt to show it properly. And now, with that done, we can go to this side or just rotate this part. And we have an additional hinge over here that will swing this whole leg to the inside of the robot leg. So we can lower this down. And while we are doing this, we can also flip this heel spur so that it will land next to the knee spike. Like so. This will form the outer part of the robot foot. And we can now bend this back. Keep this out of the way, mind you. And using this double hinge, we will first swing this out like this and now this will also swing so that this whole section lands inside of the leg and now we can open up this flap a bit and now we position everything so that the foot achieves something similar to this now we can close off this panel like that and like that and now we can rotate the dragon claws up and we can either keep them like this for additional robot mode stability but the instructions tell you to do it like that and if you keep the foot in proper balance with this part like that this will still still keep your toy in straight position without making it fall down and after a few tries, this certainly becomes easier because you will know your way around the toy by then. But the few first times or when you're trying to record the process, it can definitely be slightly annoying. And now we can transform the upper part of the toy. So we can start by flipping down this red bit on this beautiful joint and then lowering it. And then if you want, you can also swing out the neck and then rotate back the dragon head to expose the elbows from the front. And now, as you can see, at the back of this chainsaw bit we saw earlier, there's a small flap that we have to lift up. Easier said than done. Or we can just push on it and that will do the trick as well. Great. And now this allows this whole piece to flip down and that in turn allows us to separate the halves of the torso of the dragon. So we do it and in the process we expose the hidden head of the robot. So using this white and grey joint we flip it outside. But before we put the head on its final place we also want to get this center filler piece from inside of the front of the torso and to do it we have to widen this gap over here by bending out the halves of the torso and now I think it's the best idea to just get your finger behind this part and push it out until 
we expose these small rectangular protrusions and these will actually clip at these parts. So the gray has to be visible, this has to hide behind the gray rectangular pieces and we get something like this. So now the head can land on its final position and now we go to the back and as you can see this part previously tapped to these bits when they were combined using this slot and now we have two separate slots for this when it's not combined so we align everything and again close this panel off like that and finally we tidy up the wings so we grab the dragon arms and stick them somewhere over here it's not set in stone where they have to go but this is my preferred position so now we can accordion this on this double hinge like that and bend it slightly to the back and with all of that done Phalong's robot mode is now complete and in robot mode Phalong is simply fantastic to me and this is my preferred configuration of this toy Yes, the double-headed dragon mode was menacing, was imposing, was very nice to look at, but the robot mode takes all of these traits up to 11 in my opinion. This looks like a robotic powerhouse just waiting to be unleashed on some enemy. It looks fantastic with its combination of details, color scheme and overall presence. Yes, I admit, Megatooth grew onto me over time, but this was definitely not a toy that I was looking forward to. But with Phalong, this toy I highly anticipated from the very moment it was announced. Double Cross was always my favorite monster bot, and this toy is just a wonderful homage to him. And I admit, uh, with all of this bulk, this feel of power this robot has, and this very powerful robotic warrior feel, I'm not always sure if the dragon heads for hands work, but when I think about this toy as a whole, I realize that without these dragon heads, this design would not be the same and would definitely not have the same impact on me. And if there's something I like to concentrate my eyes on when looking at the robot mode, I definitely would go for the torso, head and everything that surrounds them in their proximity. The torso is an excellent blend of bulkiness, mechanical details and minimal but very effective colors. Especially these abdomen details are nice, easy to miss but I like them and all of this is just very nice. It's hard to describe this with words but it just feels right, especially when we take this slightly back and see these nice wings that surround this frame when they are collapsed. Of course we can extend them, but I think uh, they don't have the same impact once they are extended. Perhaps that's not the case for you and, then, and you like them like that, but for me this is the perfect configuration. And I think the head design is quite nice on this toy. It's not overly detailed, it's more on the simple side, but what it gives us is more than enough. I especially like this very tough looking face with these pronounced lips, chin, uh, bemused smirk, and also quite nice visor that covers both eyes and this time around is reflective. So. At some angles you can see yourself in the eyes of Fei Long. Though I admit the surroundings of the head may be slightly problematic, but I will discuss this during the posability section. And when we put Fei Long and Megatooth together, they do work. Of course, at first glance they don't have much in common with different color schemes, slightly different proportions and different alt modes. But the overall feeling of power and toughness that emanates from them makes them work as a subgroup and they will definitely look great together on the shelf. 
Also, if you take a closer look, you will notice that Fei Long, just like Megatooth, includes these small white and red markings, for example, found here and here, but unlike Megatooth, they no longer have written word elements. So, no name of the toy, no name of the manufacturer, no name or information about the collector number, which is great because these markings are quite nice on their own and I thought that inclusion of these uh, letters did spoil the experience and also kind of brought us down to earth with the thought that this is in fact a toy. It's something that really annoyed me with these uh, Generation 1 transition period toys which had for example large stickers saying Transformers all over the vehicle modes and that kind of said yes robot in disguise what a surprise. Here we have no problem like that which is great. And we also get some of these markings on parts that would otherwise be detailed less and flat. For example, the inside of the tail, which is a nice touch. I wouldn't mind this part to be plain, but with it, it looks slightly better. And just like Megatooth and Arch Enemy, Fei Long does possess fully metal parts. In his case, we have the whole front of the crotch, with these flaps included the base of the feet and the middle talons of the dragon claws. Alright, before we move on, it's time to look at Fei Long's posability, which for a toy of this bulk is quite nice. And let's start with the head, which is on a ball joint, which means Fei Long can look up and down, tilt his head to the sides and spin it around freely. And that's quite nice, although the surroundings become problematic unless you are looking at this toy from up front. If you change the position of the head, you want to take a look at the head from an angle, you can quickly see that parts of the head are missing, depending on the tilt, more parts or less parts, but overall, yes, it's slightly problematic that these collar pieces, this back piece, they do increase the overall feel of power that this toy has, but also make it quite problematic to look at this toy and feel that this is a whole robot with, a, with an actual personality, a robot that lives, because if you can't see the head clearly, you kind of depersonified the toy. And this can be solved using the transformation joint, which allows us to lift the head up, and yes, now it looks silly from the front, but from other angles, the elevated head is much more easy to spot. So you just have to decide dynamically uh, whether you want to have this lowered or raised, depending on the pose and the angle that you will look at this toy from. As I've shown you before, we can extend the wings on three separate hinges, so you can maneuver with them a lot, depending on your preference, and you can also Maneuver a bit with the dragon arms. I like to keep them over here, but if you want to make them more exposed, no problem. You can make them stick out from the top or bend them in the elbow. Lots of possibility, possibilities and none of them is any better than the other. It all depends on your tastes, which I think is a better option than just being stuck with one configuration that you may not necessarily like. For the arms, we will go over them rather fast, except for the elements that were not available to us during Dragon Mode. So, the jaws open up, of course, and I will show you what you can do with them in a second regarding that thing inside. You can rotate them to the sides, you can bend them at the double hinged elbow, and swing them on this bicep. And things you can do in robot mode now include also swinging them up and down, though they are sadly limited and the, the limitations do not come from the wings. They can go out of the way without any problem, but the issue is this round cylinder at the base of the shoulder guard. I'm not sure if that was an accurate detail that had to be there due to the source material, but because of it's there, you can see it's hitting on this post attaching the arm to the main body. 
and it's kind of hard to walk around it. You can't actually. So this limits this arm a bit and I think in a really unnecessary way. I think people could easily live without this little cylinder and then we could have free one, 360 rotation. That would be great. And we also have this nice ratchet that was involved in the transformation and something that was made strictly for robot mode, we have another butterfly hinge that will move the arm closer to the body to the front and move it to the back a bit. So this gives the arms a lot of possibility considering their design. And we also get an unlimited waist swivel. But if we want to secure the torso in one place, we can just push down on it to lock it in its dragon mode position. And now it's not going anywhere. And below that we have the front skirt armors, which move in tandem. And as you can see, they are so far away from the actual hips that they can actually bend inward. But the reason they are where they are is because this is supposed to help us move the leg forward as much as possible. As you can see, now this lines up quite nicely. And of course, because of it's, it's not there, we have no such issue when kicking to the back. And Phelon can also do a full split if you so choose. And under the hip structures, he has a thigh swivel. And below that, he has a knee joint, which goes below 90 degrees due to these flaps. But if you want, you can just open them up and then this range extends a lot. Though, if you want to keep your toy aesthetic to a certain degree, I think sticking to this bend is a better option. And then we have the feet, which can move forward and backward. If you so choose, this flap makes this easier. And here we have this ball joint made from the dragon's knee that allows the foot to bend down, bend slightly up, and also tilt to the sides a bit. Now let's talk about the weapons because it would make no sense to make Fei Long capable of carrying them in dragon mode while denying him this ability in a robot mode. And for this purpose, we will use these side tabs in the handles, which correspond to small holes replacing the tongue of Fei Long's dragon head. And actually, you are supposed to use this one. This may look like a slot for them, but this is actually holding in place this small plastic panel. So if you want to use something inside his jaws, use the first one that's facing you from the closer position. So now we tap this to this. Simple enough. And while it may look kind of silly to hold a weapon in a dragon's jaw, it still works and Fei Long can do this double style. And like I said, I know at first this might look silly, but considering the sheer amount of joints in the arms, this allows us to make these guns really expressive and put them into many interesting poses. Also, you can make these guns into shoulder cannons if you fiddle a bit with the position of the wings and attached dragon arms and place the handles between the shoulders of the dragon and shoulder blades of Fei Long. And now let's take a look at the second weapon available to Fei Long in a robot mode. And yes, it's available in dragon mode as well, but I think in robot form it has a bigger impact and looks way cooler. So yes, that's this cannon that we first saw in dragon mode. Its barrel is pretty visible in both modes. And if we want to just expose it, we just raise and lower the jaws respectively. And now we can see it's there, it's a flamethrower, it's a plasma energy gun, it's whatever we want. We know that there's a gun in there. But what we can do is to use the secondary hinges of both jaws to completely move them out of the way in the fashion that you prefer. And now we push in on this whole forearm to expose this barrel. And this looks 
really great. This looks like a high energy cannon with its safety locks released for firing. And this can look like this. We can raise it up to look like an inverse bore. There are many options and all of them look cool, especially if we decide to involve both forearms and have a double-barreled volley of high destruction. And yes, using this cannon blocks the ability to swivel the dragon heads, but I think that's a small sacrifice for this weapon option. So, as you can tell, I really like this configuration for the dragon heads, but what I like even more is that the slots for the guns are still exposed and unobstructed. So, what we can do to increase the fun even more is to attach the guns now and flip the lower jaw completely backwards, and now we can give each arm two barrels to fire. And when I want to pose Fei Long as using long-range weapons, this is definitely my favorite configuration and one that we can approach in several ways. So it's literally a barrel of fun. But of course, if we want to go for something simpler and perhaps more effective at close range, we can always just tuck away the lower jaw and use the dragon fangs for some good old slashy slashy scratchy scratchy. And no, this toy technically can't hold weapons of either Megatooth or Arch Enemy properly, but if we decide to make it improperly, it's still possible to a certain degree, at least for display purposes. And if you think that with all of this bending of the jaws possible, the barrels are a perfect attachment point for hypothetical humanoid hands for Fei Long, I agree with you and I'm sad by the fact that this was not incorporated into this toy right from the start. However, it seems that fans hobby has noticed this sentiment among people because they are attaching such humanoid hands for Fei Long together with their next released Fly Pro. And now it's time to start the robot mode comparisons. And since I've already shown you how Fei Long looks next to Megatooth, let's put another toy from Fans Hobby into the equation. This is MBO1 Arch Enemy. And here's Fei Long next to some official masterpiece releases. Starting from the left, we have Ironhide, second version of Optimus Prime, Wheeljack, and Prowl. And here we have them next to Masterpiece Grimlock, Prince Zuko of the Fire Nation, and Super Robot Chugokin Daijiujin. And finally, here we have the common cola can, a typical DVD case, and a typical CD case. To sum it all up, I was hoping that Fei Long would be a great transforming toy and display piece, and I'm happy to say that minor nitpicks aside, he meets the expectations. This is one bulky, imposing and well-articulated monster of a robot that will please the eye in both modes without posing too much challenges on the way between them. I also appreciate how this toy changed while going from the prototype to final product stage, and really like how one can adjust the position of many parts on it to achieve their preferred look, especially for the robot mode. I wish the announced expansion parts, such as the humanoid hands, were already available out of the box, but given how most of people getting hold of this toy will also buy Flypro that will include them, it can be forgiven. It's better than not getting them at all, and Fans Hobby isn't the first group to release add-ons this way either. So, if you are fans of the original monster bots, robot dragons, or just like solid shapeshifting toys, Fei Long should be a good item to spend your disposable income on. And that's all for this video review. I will be back with the next one soon. And until then, stay well.